Are we good, Brick? Is it recording? Yeah, yeah. Is it the red dot? I always get concerned. Like the red dot. The red dot some t- yeah, like you don't. Last thing you want to do is not hit the record button and you miss three hours of footage. Yeah. Then you fuck your life up. up. Let's keep keep that keep that sucker like oh, in front of you. Yeah. yeah. Are we good? As long as we're talking to it, we're sweet. Okay. We've never sat down and talked. We haven't. Like. We work together for years and years and you never get to sit down and actually know who the hell the people like are around you. This is true. Did I it? like this. We should do this more often, Alex. Well, we're doing it right now and that's a Perfect. start. Like, let's start the most basic of basic. Mm-hmm. You've been in the health and fitness industry for, I think a lot of people don't realize, quite a long time. What eight are we, years? Eight, eight and a half years now. Eight years. Eight and a half years. Yeah. Why? What drew you to this whole thing? Uh, this is an interesting story, actually. So I finished at 12. I went through the first year of a applied sport, uh, applied science degree. Mm. Hated it. Really? Like failed three quarters of my subjects because I just hated it. Did really good at maths, funnily enough. Okay. Like really good at maths. Um, then I was dating a guy at the time who was doing a diploma in fitness and a friend of ours was doing a diploma in fitness as well. Um, no, sorry, he was doing a set three, four. And so we were at a birthday dinner or something one night and we were all just kind of chatting and they were like, oh, you should look into it, Jess. The least sporty person you know. Back then. <laughs> Back then, least sporty person you know. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't think anything of it. And then I was kind of like, oh, I hate this degree. I'll look into it. I'll probably hate it, but at least it's something I can tick off the list and say, I've looked at it and it's not for me. Hmm. Looked at it, found a course that I absolutely fell in love with. And that's the start of my fitness career. What was that course that you fell in love with? Diploma in fitness. Hold on, but did you did a diploma of science, you said? No, I did the first year of a Bachelor of Applied Science. Applied Science, then Fitness. Big differences to Big you still? Big difference, yeah. Because okay. it was like chemistry, biology, right, and then sport. Right, like more relevant to actually physically training yourself. Yeah, definitely. And what was that moment you realised, all right, this is something I want to do? Um, like how long into it did you realise? Before I started. Really? Like I was checking out the course and I was like, ah. this is great. I've always, I've always had an interest in the human body. Mm. Always. When I was little, I wanted to be a heart surgeon. Really? Yeah. See? Didn't know that, did we? Learning. Learn something heart today, Brick. What? Now, you know, childhood little things that we want to do where only like a few people actually really chase them from like a young age. Why didn't you chase that? Uh, I, mean, I kind of did and kind of didn't. At the time, I didn't get a high enough enter score to get into what I wanted to do, which was a Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery, double degree. Oh, shit. Yep. So I kind of went, oh, I'll do an applied science degree and then kind of like hmm. ex- do an extra three years and wear my way in. Uh, but I, I just couldn't get through the science degree. See, I hated I, it. I hear people now, like I have a lot of respect and admiration for like grown adults who will start studying into their 30s and 40s and 50s. Actually, one of my former clients, she's in her 30s. She's now becoming a physiotherapist after being a Maya. I was like, that's amazing. It's great. Yeah. Keep going. Do you think, do you anticipate you moving off in another direction and like doing further study in the future? Uh, potentially. Like I'm what? not going to count it out. Like At what? this point in my life, no, but potentially, maybe. What would the potentially be? What makes you curious? Uh, nursing. Mm. So again, human body. So the interest in that is still there. It's just a matter of which way I kind of go. Mm. So now, eight years in, is this what you expected? Is this what you anticipated? Uh, no. I'm going to say no because I didn't see myself working with athletes at the time when I did it. Mm. Who did you see yourself working with? Just general population. You Your didn't. weekend warrior commercial gym people. Did you start off like that? Yeah. So you got... Ex- and what? I'm kind of actually done a full second and almost, almost back there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Now, do you think now completing this full circle, you're ending a, uh, a, an end of a chapter or that is the beginning of a new chapter with kind of uh, another or continuation of, of this industry in this field? Because I know we've talked about back and forth about like dipping your toe into other things. Where do you think the next chapter is? This is a good question. And I don't know. Mm. I don't have an answer for you. Um, I enjoy, I've always enjoyed working with general population people. I 
came to Woodford originally um, as an intern to kind of get into sport to challenge myself a bit more because I started to get bored with general population. And I think I'm kind of going back there because not that I'm bored with sport, but it's just something different again. Um, and I think I like having the two different things. It keeps me, it keeps my mind going and I'm constantly thinking about different things. I think in a lot of ways, sometimes training the average person, the general population client is harder. Mm. In a way that you don't have the assumed dedication and pursuit of excellence through the vehicle of sport. Yep. It's not some external thing you're chasing. It's more like oftentimes the people don't know. The already have that. Yeah. They a, come to you ready to train. Right. There's a discipline that they've ingrained themselves most, more, more often than not. Yeah. But then with the average person, you kind of have to show them that sometimes. Mm. How You've got to help them develop that within themselves. So how do you help them develop that? Because so many people struggle with discipline, with consistency, with just doing the good habits that make their life better. Start small. Mm. Start small with something like make your bed every day. I love that. Did, did you hear Eat that breakfast. on my last podcast? That's what I said on, my last, on the last podcast with uh, Weatherly. So there you go. I haven't, you even, I haven't listened to that yet. So this is fresh. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's organic. There you go. So yeah, make your bed. Go ahead. Yeah. Something as simple as make your bed mm. or eat breakfast every day or, you know, you brush your teeth every day. Why can't you go to the gym every day? You don't have to work at 100% intensity all the time. You can just go in and move. That's I a- did that today. Right. I moved. So I'm so, I was so tired today? this morning. I went in and I did my rehab stuff. It's not particularly hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, like it's hard on like, my shoulder, but it's not like mentally challenging or anything like that. And I was like, you know what? If this is the base that I get done today, I'm happy with that. I don't have to, you know, go 100% on the prowler or whatever it is every single time. And that, I think that mentality is ingrained in our culture a lot. And even in communities like CrossFit, which you're very experienced with. Yep, love so CrossFit. So how do you know when to pull back? I always go based on how I'm feeling. Hmm. Um, and I tend to ask myself the questions of like, how, like, am I really tired or am i lazy oh what do you am i being lazy or am i just kind of trying to like get out of something or am i like really tired really exhausted am i mentally not here why am i mentally not here like all these questions then kind of dictate how much i do and what i do what do you find you get an answer from more often than not you gotta be honest even though am i being lazy 100%. 100%. Really? Am I being lazy? Yes or no? No, but like which one? Which answer do you do you get more often than not? And why do you get those answers? Um, at the moment, the answer is usually yes, because I've kind of hit a bit of a, not a tipping point, but like a plateau with my injuries. And I'm kind of like, oh, I miss Olympic lifting. Mm. I miss, you know, squatting, deadlifting, all the, you know, stuff that I would take for granted and being able to do, which now I currently can't do. So that ta- I just kind of go, uh Ex- Explain to me way. what's going on right now. What's going on with your body? I have a shoulder impingement. I gave myself a shoulder from impingement. From snowboarding, right? From snowboarding. Yeah. I fell and I put my arm out and kind of jammed it up and bounced a few times and that was fun. Mm. Didn't realise it at the time. Kind of came away like I usually do and go, oh, I'm a little bit sore, but I'm usually a little bit sore after I've fallen over a few times. And then, you know, two, three weeks later, I'm like, this hasn't quite gone away yet. And I haven't gone back to the snow and I haven't really done anything out of like normal to still be sore so better go get this checked out it's still hanging around (laughs) how many months ago was that because it's summer august last year now that's always it's a weird luckily thankfully fortunately and also i've created it but i've never had any serious injuries like that i've never had any surgeries i've never broken any fractured anything i've never broken any bones either yeah. <laughs> that's good that is good that bone density that very good but i think it's a very humbling thing when you go through something like that i've n- i never i've never known what it's like to get my movement taken away from me my, my ability to move and be strong taken away and i pray you don't right but sometimes i think it's like a very humbling thing like you it's like a lesson in that mm to get that taken from you. It's like, okay, you took this for granted. Mm-hmm. It's like a, like a, and serious injuries can be like a, almost like a, especially if you're an athlete, like a death of character and like a rebirth kind of thing. Yeah. 
Are you, what do you, how are you going through that mentally? Because you're a coach, you know, you got to keep training, be healthy. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I always, I, as a coach, I have the uh, mentality or a principle of I only give my clients exercises that I can do because I need to be able to demonstrate for them. Yes. And so luckily my clients all at this stage know how to squat, know how to deadlift. So yeah. I don't have to demonstrate. I can just say, you know, adjust this or whatever. And they like, they get it. Um, but that's hard. That's really, it's, it's hard when you can't do something as simple as deadlift or squat. Like I can body weight squat, so I kind of get away with that. Um, but yeah. Why can't you deadlift right now? Oh, because I also have, on top of the shoulder, I also have, so that's my left shoulder in my right hip. I have an SIJ problem slash glute tendinopathy. We're kind of playing with it. Sacroiliac joint for those who yeah, need sorry the guys. explanation. <laughs> um, so you have an SI joint what? SIJ joint issue. We're not entirely sure what it is. We're kind of playing with it at the moment. And basically I'm just doing things that don't hurt. So I'm a bit of an anomaly in the case that I, usually if you have an SIJ problem, riding a bike really irritates it, but I can ride a bike no problem. Sitting for long periods of time, does that irritate it? Uh, yeah. It does? It does. So that's why, like, I'm a naturally fidgety person, but yeah. yeah, you'll probably see me do a bit of this at some point and like get off that hip and then I'll go, okay, other side. It's uh, it's really deep, that Saka earlier joke. I'm just looking at images just to remind myself. It's very deep within the pelvis that attaches to the sacrum. Um, how the hell, why, what do you think you're getting inflammation and, and, and problems there for? Like, what are you, what are you doing about that? Um, so this actually came about from running. Yeah. When I was doing some extra running, I, it just it highlighted an, an imbalance hmm. that I must have already had, but kind of the extra running and all the extra impact, I was obviously learning one side more than the other, and here we are. So how are you rehabbing those? Uh, I got a lot of different exercises. We've been through quite a few different exercises to see what works. We're still currently just seeing what works because, yeah, as I said, I'm a bit of an, an anomaly. So, like, usually lying down hurts it doesn't hurt unless I lie on that side um which sometimes I wake up on that side and I'll kind of go oh okay I'm going to be sore for the day and then I'm not but then sometimes I do usually with an SIJ problem you're sore in the morning specifically and then it kind of mellows out throughout the day if I'm sore I'm sore all day really yep if I'm not sore then I'm good so it's just you'll know as soon as you wake up Mm. whether that's a productive good day feel good or not yep or if I'm just going to have an average day and kind of got to push through it a little bit to obviously get all my coaching and stuff done. So you're just relying on your, the coach you're working with to help you kind of maneuver through this. Yep. And then what? Um, and then I'll be back to doing what I love. <laughs> Do you want to compete? Have this you ever thought about question. that? This is a good question. I've been thinking about this a lot. I miss competing. So for those of you who don't know, I used to compete in CrossFit. Um, just locally, not like CrossFit games or anything like that. I really loved it at the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do it. I can't. I kind of want to do it again just to like get back to that point. Yeah. And say that yeah, you know, I'm back at this level. Um, and I kind of, I kind of don't. I kind of. Why? I don't know if I've lost my passion, but then I kind of go, have I actually lost my passion, or is it just because I'm injured, hmm. and I've lost that motivation rather than the passion? What for would it. the pa- What would you lose the passion for though? CrossFit. Compete, so, competing in CrossFit specifically. Okay, so that specifically. Yeah. Is there anything else that I think, I imagine, I'm going to make an assumption, mm-hmm. does strong man, strong woman training, does that uh Yeah, I was doing some of that. I was doing some of that before I got injured. Mm. All the yoke stuff. Yes. That was fun. I fucking it was fun because it was hard. <laughs> it is so... Humbling. F- it is humbling. <laughs> it's and, very humbling. But just picking heavy shit off the ground and odd ob- objects and implementation, walking with it, carrying it, Picking it up. Well, it's kind it. of what you do in everyday life, don't you? Right. It's not like the grocery bag you pick up is perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Perfectly yeah. symmetrical. Exactly. It, this is. It's like real life moving and lifting, except extreme weight. Extreme. Yeah. Just like times a hundred. Yeah. Just let me pick up this heavy ass big old stone mm-hmm. and plop it onto a platform. Yep. It's fucking. Or throw it over my shoulder. Or, yes. Yeah. It's. It's like. It's so. I, I resonated, I see it as like a, a very masculine thing, but I can see how the people resonate with it in different ways. Um, like people tapping into more brute strength and just really reclaiming their strength and confidence within their body and using strongman as a tool to get there. It's, that's, 
that's the the road I'm on now. Um, working with Coach uh, Coach Kearney, shout out to him. Shout out. World's strongest gay is what he calls himself. Robert. Robert Kearney. Yes, Robert Kearney. Um, and yeah, it's just lifting weights is. I think if you've never done it, you really don't know how much it can transform you. Mm-hmm. Like, you can fundamentally change your physiology, your psychology. How good is feeling strong? Fuck. I miss feeling strong. Oh. I said that to my coach the other day. Another shout out. Hi, Marty. Marty. Peak, peak, sport, peak sport performance? Peak, peak sport science and peak gymnastics. Hit him up. So for gymnastics training. Reddit, yeah. Yeah, you recommend. Highly. Yeah, okay. He's an ex-like national gymnast. Yeah. That's another thing, like gymnastics. I love gymnastics. Some of the strongest men and women on the planet. Yeah. Oh, their physiques, they're insane. Come on. Because you can't, you can't afford to carry much excess fat because yeah. there's no contractile tissue because it's useless. Yeah, you just you're have just to carrying be, around extra weight. Yeah. So you yeah. have to be relatively supremely strong. Mm-hmm. I don't know what their cardiovascular base is like. What do you think? I mean, beside a floor Dep- routine. It depends on what they're doing. Hmm. Like, it'd have to be relatively high. Especially if so. they're doing a lot of, like, handstands and stuff. Right. And, and some of the routines can take, like, one, two minutes, can't mm. they? Yeah, it's true. I didn't think about that. I used to, That was one of the first things I did as a kid. Gymnastics? Yeah. I'm sure to know. I never did gymnastics. No? Now I tell all my friends who have kids, you've got to put your kids in gymnastics. Oh, yeah. Don't do netball. Do gymnastics. Oh, this is a good one. If I could pick... If you could pick a handful of sports to expose a young child to mm-hmm. for their growth and development mentally and physically mm-hmm. what would you pick gymnastics definitely mm-hmm. uh footy why that specifically um and what would you pick for those who aren't in australia who don't have that as a national sport nfl any sort of no i'm not gonna say any sort of football because i put soccer in a different a different category again but nfl or football or aussie rules football i'd put in the same category because learning to take a hit not necessarily learning to take a hit as in like fighting later on in life but like there's just something about having that personal contact with yes. someone else and being able to tackle and get tackled and they like being resilient exactly it's all about the resilience that you know what i definitely agree with it from that perspective and i think like growing up i was pretty soft like mentally and physically and i think one of my biggest limitations in basketball which I de- which is for those who don't know, that's what I dedicated my mm-hmm. life towards for a period of time. So one of my biggest limitations was that I I think I was afraid of a lot of contact and I was I wasn't used to a lot of contact. And people think basketball is a non contact sport. It's definitely not. It definitely has a lot of elements of especially when you play, you know, with no referees, mm. you're gonna be a lot rougher. The rules are whatever you want them to be at exactly. that point. Exactly. And so I think that was one of my biggest limitations. Mentally, I wasn't hard enough and strong enough to use contact and physical aggression to my advantage. And I think that's a great point. Like most people don't understand what it's like to clash bodies with somebody Mm. and even get in little fights. Yep. I think that's valuable. But one thing Mm -hmm. that messes me up about those two sports and that is especially relevant for children where am i going i don't know you tell me head trauma yeah fuck concussions a big one fuck concussions after did you um listen to the podcast with dr alan pierce on christian woodford's ask woodford oh man he's brilliant and he went 50 minutes on basically concussions and subconcussive trauma and cte and tbi and it's like I, that's the it's the last thing you want um, is some type of brain injury for a child. It can affect their brain development, their growth, and their, mm. their gray matter in their brain. It's like that's no, nah, I can't deal with that. Then no, concussions are very serious. I agree with that. I gave myself a concussion once. How? All on my own. I was getting in the car, hit my head straight. In no, the side you of the car. gave yourself a concussion yeah, getting I, in the car. I hit my head so hard. I went to the doctors for it. Holy yeah. shit. They gave me a CT and everything. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, hey, Matt, it's one thing about actually, okay. You can't detect concussions with any scanning imagery that is, well, I'm not going to say any. 99% of scanning imagery you can't detect concussions with that are available to the public. So they must have been detecting for like structural issues, I was, I'm assuming. 
Yeah, and I think like brain bleeds and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, brain. Well. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like checking that I. Did you really have any of that? No. Good. I was good. How did you know you had a concussion though? How did um, they define it? So I obviously through this job need first aid certificate, but on the side I also do some first aid and um, sports trainer stuff. Yes. Um, and so through that I've just dealt with a lot of concussions and whatnot. And so I kind of already knew, like I I know the protocol for it and I know what to look out for in someone else. And so as soon as it started happening to me, although I couldn't control, like I was slurring my words a lot. Oh, yeah. And I don't usually. It's not good. Exactly. And so I couldn't control that, but I still knew that that wasn't right and that I wasn't right. And I was like, I'm not supposed to be slurring my words. I can't control it. So after all my training, I knew that something wasn't quite right and I had to go to the doctors and just get checked. Okay. That's really important because I'm just putting my notes on concussions and one of the problems in australia about concussions or around the world is like we don't have a a a strict diagnosis Mm. it's not like seeing a physio where you can or you can be you can scan a bone and see a fracture for example when dr alan pierce he talked about this he said any sign and symptom post concussion within the window i think he called it 24 to 48 hours we classify that as a concussion any symptom, we call it nausea, because it can come in so many different mm. varieties. So you had slurring words. Mm-hmm. That's that's not good. Mm. Um, and the implication from that, so like, how did you recover from that? Because everyone has a different um, thing. Like, I, I recovered okay. I It took me a couple of days, but yeah, I got the scan and I was okay. I just, I did what I would do for anyone else. So I kind of went, okay, for the next, you know, five or six hours, don't go to sleep. It was the middle of the day. So I was like, just don't take a nap, Jess. Everyone who knows me knows I I love that. that. Because you might not wake up. (laughs) Damn. I mean, if it's that serious. If it's that serious, then like you're going to see it. It's obvious. Shit. So. I didn't think about that. Interesting story for you. Okay. When I was sports trainer at a footy match, the worst concussion I've ever seen. This guy got, went in for a tackle, just standard. This guy tackled like my player, um, fell onto the floor. I actually had my back to the game because I was talking to another player so all the players on the bench alerted me and were like, Jess, you've got to go. can't remember his name to save my life because I was filling in for another team. But you've got to go out there. Went out there. Didn't even bring him to the bench straight off into the rooms because he just kept going, where am I? Oh, shit. Do you know what your name is? And he'd just sit there and he'd be like... And I'd be like... He couldn't okay, answer cool. it. Couldn't answer it. Couldn't tell me what his name was. Couldn't oh tell me what God. day it was. That's... Couldn't tell me what quarter of the game we were in. Had no idea. And he just kept saying, what happened? What happened? What yeah. happened to me? And we'd constantly be like, you were involved in a tackle. We're just, we've got an ambulance on our way. You know, we're just going to look after you and make sure everything's all right. And he'd be like, oh, I want to go back out there. No, you can't. Like, you've been hurt. You can't. But I feel fine. No. Oh, motherfucker. Get the fuck Can you out. tell me what your name is? No. You can't go <laughs> He wanted to go there. out and he couldn't tell he you couldn't his tell name. couldn't tell me what his name was. Oh, come on, son. And like, even something as simple as like, what colour was the bag that you bought in today? Damn. Where's your wallet? No idea. Is he okay? Is he still alive? He's good. He's good. He went to the hospital. He's good. I got reports back a couple of days later. Shit. He's good. But so, yeah, had oh no idea. That's that's serious. When mm. you that, that they can't remember your name. Yeah. That's, that's he that's kept leaning forward like this, or like his elbows were on his knees. Yeah. And I was like, and he'd shut his eyes, and I'd be like, do not fall asleep. Like I'd literally push his shoulder back. There are. I don't know if you've heard, but the the link between brain trauma and later life Alzheimer's and dementia. Have you heard about that? I would imagine it's quite high. I haven't heard about it, but yeah. I would imagine it's quite high. There's a strong correlation there. Number two, with uh, acts of uh, violence as well. Yeah. Have you... The movie Concussion? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. Dr. Amalu. That's, that's, that's based on real stories real story. and real yeah. science. Um, but that... Even, look, it's hard to tell. We, we, we can't tell, like, how, how much brain trauma when you're young, um, how, how is that going to affect you later in life? But it's, I think it's a super serious thing because, one, we don't know how much trauma the brain needs. I think everyone's slightly individual. also depends on genetics, mm-hmm. how that's going to impact later in life. But I think just that alone and the implications to extreme... Um, mood dysregulation and acts of violence and uh people like lose their identity in a lot of ways they become different people become a lot more uh risky they take uh, more likely to take risks 
Um, onset of Alzheimer's, dementia becomes earlier because the buildup of uh, like things like beta amyloid plaques and tau, which are these inflammatory proteins that build up in the brain. Um, so don't fuck around with brain trauma. And I would, on top of, we haven't actually answered the full question of no, all the what sports. Was the question? The, all the sports with the kids. <laughs> that's why oh, we've yes. done this. Okay, that's right. I remember. Like, man, that's my biggest hesitation. If you have a mm. child or if you know somebody who's doing full contact sport Look from after a really him, young age, wear helmets, mouth guards, all that jazz. Yeah, do the best you can. But even then, even. But adjust the rules. Like, at the end of the day, there's always going to be a degree of risk that you take for sure. with any sport. But Absolutely. If you can minimize, minimize it from a young age. Yeah. That's why I like the idea of like a jujitsu over like a, a, a contact like taekwondo or you know, they have head contact or like full contact sports. Um, but even uh, helmets, would you say helmets? What do you, what do you call them? Mm, helmets. helmets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even they, they'll, they might minimize structural damage from a really heavy contact. Like, a, like say you're riding your brain, a bike. Your brain's still going to shake around though. Exactly. Yeah. And even they think that the extra added weight from wearing the helmet can increase the impulse, right? So mm. the time and force that the brain travels around in the skull, in between the fluid, which puts more trauma to the brain. So that, that's a theory Alan Pierce talked about, but I mean, fuck, it just seems like an inescapable, unfortunate thing. It's interesting. It's like, do you play a non-contact sport but then non-contact, you think, netball, basketball, in theory, are non-contact, but relative. it's still very contact. But relative to the... Relative to football, yeah, non-contact. Yeah, yeah but for sure. there's still risk there. Yeah. Do you play no sport and then consider the health implications? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Like, there's so many variables that you kind of got to work out exactly... Yeah. Where you, I guess, where your belief system lies. Right. But at least... And what you're willing to risk. Yes, but it's a thing when when you have a child, which most of us will at some point. When you have another being that isn't uh, intelligent and aware enough of the world to make that decision themselves, they don't understand the implications of all these physiological factors. You are putting the your risk of your child, and you're making that decision for them, mm. right? It's like when you're pregnant, you decide what nutrition, supplementation habits you have. When you breastfeed, you decide all that. That's going to have implications to your child's health. Mm -hmm. Same thing with like these lifestyle decisions. So what are those decisions going to be? Because they could have serious consequences. That's, no that's something only the individual can answer. Exactly. If you had your time again, would you go with basketball again or would you choose a different sport? In hindsight now, knowing everything that you know and going through everything that you've been through mm. and the person that you are today. Well, I'll answer the question by not starting to not answer the question. <laughs> In true Alex fashion. Yes. And that is, I, uh, I picked basketball because I just decided I want to be great at something. Mm -hmm. I, was, I didn't feel like I was good at anything. I didn't feel like I was smart, attractive, competent in really any skill, naturally or with anything. Communication, socially. And so I just decided, fuck it. I'm going to be great at something. Mm -hmm. And I decided that. So the question, the answer to that question is, well, that could have been anything. It depends what I was exposed to. Uh, I was just exposed to my group of friends playing basketball every day, recess and lunch. And I'm like, all right, this is going to be the thing. Like, I like it. And I want to be great at it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. But I really, uh, and before that I did gymnastics. I tried that. I did, uh, what else did I do? I did um, karate for a few years and athletics. So it's not like I, it was the only thing I did when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I really like the idea now of jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. Brazilian jiu-jitsu, because it is no head contact. It is, it is just ground-braced, grappling and 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 submitting your opponent via various like methods and techniques and it just has implications to like you know fuck my joint up if i fuck a muscle up if i fuck a tendon ligament i can heal that i'll be like i'm confident in my abilities that i can mitigate that more than a brain trauma mm -hmm. so maybe that cool do you have an answer i do gymnastics you would do it i would you never did it when you're younger but you would do it no i would hell yeah and it's like not just doing it, but like engrossing yourself in it. Hmm. 
like really being good at like it. Like doing all the comps that, you know, all the three-year-olds and stuff do. Like, yeah, I'd do that. But then to answer the, our question, you mm-hmm. said gymnastics. Well, as a kid, uh, mm-hmm. what, what you would give? Gymnastics? You said. Now, do you rethink I, the question on no, the I, A? You still got AFL? Yeah. Damn. Because there's, there's, there's ways around Fuck it. Fuck the kids, man. Like you think Oz <laughs> kick and stuff. <laughs> Fuck the, Fuck the brains, man. They'll, <laughs> Who needs them? <laughs> they'll get some injections. Some new supplements will come out. Um, no, because like with Oz kick and stuff, like they yeah, change they rules. Modify. Yeah, that's true. Based on the age, so yeah, yeah. There's ways around it. Sure. I believe. Obviously, it's a, there's always still a risk, but they will make it as safe as possible, mm. depending on the age and what they're capable of. And then it also comes down to good coaches and bad coaches, right? A good coach will teach you how to tackle properly. Versus the bad coach is just like, just grab them and throw them. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's another one. Yeah, some sort of martial art. Yeah. Always good to know how to defend yourself. Absolutely. I think it breeds a lot of discipline as well. Mm, definitely. There's, there's a lot of, uh, like you talk about, make your bed in the morning, right? It's like a one one small win of the day. Mm-hmm. I think you can learn almost everything there is to learn about yourself and life through the modality of a, a disciplined, physical, physically taxing task, mm. like weight training, jiu-jitsu, any sport. Like you can, you really learn about yourself then. Like what you're made of, like win or lose, like that's it. Like unless someone's, unless you got parents who aren't counting scores or giving out participation trophies don't get me started on that all right let's get you started on it jess <laughs> have you seen that have you been, i've i've thankfully haven't been exposed to that but i only hear about it um you know i've seen it a few times really i'm right. not a fan of the participation medal where does that where do you see that happening you got to teach your kids to take the losses mm. just as much as take the wins like you walk you go to a job interview you either get it or you don't that's life you don't get a particip- participation medal for going to the interview. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> We're really happy you came. Here's this letter to show your parents that you, you came, but you didn't but you get But you didn't it. get the job. But right. good on you for trying. Right. Like, <laughs> oh, fucking. Oh. Some like, people- this comes back to the resilience, right, with the tackling. Yeah. Like, build some resilience in your kids from a young age. Mm. Teach them right from wrong. Teach them how to win and how to lose graciously. Like, yeah. I how just- do you do that? Because some, some, there's a lot of little shits out there who don't learn that. Yeah, but why don't they learn that? You tell me. Partic- participation medals mm. is number one. They don't. As my mum likes to say, new age hippie parenting is number two. What does that mean? <laughs> um, ties into the participation medals of my kid's special. Oh, my, my kid's special and everything. My kid could do everything. I mean, don't get me wrong. I this. have no kids and I have no, like, I understand that my opinion is just my opinion and it probably doesn't stand for much because I have no kids. Right. But from a coaching perspective, right. of kids who come in and think they're, you know, they're going to be the next insert famous person here in whatever their sport is. Like, yeah, they might be, but they also might not be. What happens when they're not? Because the chances of them being not is a lot higher than them being that person. That's true. Uh, I tell you, as someone who had that thought and belief of myself when I was younger, I didn't really start thinking about what was next until coaches I respected started challenging me and number two that in the later years of my career that I really started thinking about that um, I think when you get obsessed about something they say some say don't have a plan B because it distracts from plan A mm. right that kind of mentality mm-hmm. of all the way in mm-hmm. but then I think you don't have to just pick one thing no you don't it's and this is one of the things I realized like about life in the last like five years I'm like hold on I don't have to just be a, uh, I don't even know what to call myself sometimes. I'm a fucking, a generalist mm-hmm. is really what I, what I, I, th- I feel I am. Mm-hmm. But what the fuck is a gen- Hi, I'm gen- what do you do? To- I'm a generalist. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? What do you build things? <laughs> but as a, as a, ha- oh, where am I going? What are we talking about? Um, good question. What are we talking about? As a generalist, as a health coach, Introducing myself. Say Jack. See ya. God damn it, kids! I need a, I need a, I need a person just to remind me of the conversation oh, we're that we're right. having. We're talking about participation medals and new age hippie parenting, and um, where did I say after that? 
Oh, oh everyone thinking they're special. Yeah, we're and not. that they're the next big thing in whatever their oh, sport okay. is. Oh, okay, okay. Well, this is actually what I wanted to ask you. How do you deal with the parents? Because a lot of parents come in here, and they'll be. The bit, parents is an interesting bearing. one. Yeah. Because the parents, obviously, are the ones who go, like, so the kid shows interest in something, right? And then the parents are like, "Oh, I kind of see some talent there. Someone's told them that they've got ta- that their kid has talent there." And so then they start running off with the with the story. The story that hasn't happened yet. Mm. And so they're already like envisioning their kid being the next Michael Jordan or, you know, Dusty Martin or insert insert player here, mm. right? But their kid is still this big and trying to kick a football or bounce basketball. But they've already gotten there because someone said, Oh, your kid's got some talent. Like your kid might make a rep team one day. Congratulations. Like, your kids made a rep team, but then what? Like, think about their education. Think about, you know, what if they don't make it? Pump them up, yes. Give them encouragement, yes. But don't pump them up so much that their heads are out here. Yeah. That's my personal belief. The parents are an interesting one to deal with. Um, Yeah, I don't know. It's tricky. It's very tricky. I've only... Because you don't want to tell them how to parent. Yeah. Especially when you don't have kids yourself. It's always a delicate thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's a weird thing. That's where I try and get in the kids' gear and I'm just like, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. What, what subjects are you doing at school? What are you Why th- are you doing them? Yeah. Do you enjoy them? Yeah. What do you think about the actual sport you play? Mm. Do you like it, little do you, Jimmy? Do you actually like playing football? Yeah. What do you like about it? Yeah. Some kids are pretty introverted. I got quite a few. Some, some are like, like um, what's his name? Uh, the uh, um, white kid with like red hair, small, um, trained here, like an RDL, like 60 kilos. He's like 11 years old. Brady. Yeah, Brady. Start with a B. Shout out. You'll love it. Yeah. So Br- Br- uh, Brady is an, he's an 11 year old, like, he's. Beast. A, yeah. He, he, he is a beast. No he, doubt about it. Absolutely. He's insane. To describe this young kid. We're talking about 11 years old Caucasian athlete who plays football and he's ve- relatively very strong and even absolutely very strong mm. for his size and age. So strong so for his size. Do you remember what he's, what he's lifted just to give some numbers? Some re- There's a 70 kilo trap I did lift in there. Yeah, and he, f- he probably weighs like 40 kilos. Oh, yeah. well, he weighs next to nothing. Right? I could throw the kid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, to, and he's only been training about... Maybe one to two years. Yeah, if that. If that. And, like, what a so great dedicated. foundation. Oh, yeah. So dedicated, Discipline. Though. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably, yeah, you know. Yeah, you talk about discipline, it's in that kid. It's probably from his parents, I bet, too. Hmm. You know, it starts at the home and the environment. Um, but that's the thing. Like, that's going to, I told him, um, because I think it's so important, because, like, you know what? It doesn't matter if you make it or not. Like, you don't realize that as a kid when you're training, you're trying to do something great, even as an adult. It's like, it's like, oh, okay. Winning and losing actually doesn't, doesn't matter as much. You learn it doesn't matter as much as you, as you think it does because the person you become through that process is the most invaluable thing. Like at the end of the day, 99% of young kids trying to make it into professional sports want to make it. Mm. Okay, what do we do about this? You show them that stat. A lot of them get dissuaded. A lot of them say, fuck that, I'm going to make it. Some do, some don't. Mm -hmm. But it's like, let's not even talk about that. Let's talk about the fact that who you will become, and I'm telling Brady, this will transfer to everything you do in your life in the future. The discipline you will build, the resiliency you will build, the character you will build, and the person you will become. Mm -hmm. Unstoppable. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Like... That's it. The, the, this is a vehicle for self-discovery, self-awareness, and self-transformation. And so if you don't weight train, if you don't do some type of physical movement, physical challenge and stress, you need to. Otherwise, you, you, I think you're like atrophying. You're, you're literally atrophying. Through the mind, especially. Yeah, through the mind too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when you get those overbearing parents, because at the end of the day, their kids are there mainly because they're parents. So how do you communicate to those parents? So I trained a tennis player. She was 13. 
um, actually not that long ago. And she stopped tra training with me recently because she wasn't interested. Didn't want to be there. Oh, good. It was a headache of an hour for me ah. trying to get her to do some stuff. That's always the And worst. her dad would constantly come to me and be like, she needs to get faster. She's not getting to the ball. And I'm like, I'm trying, but you can't change speed instantly. Like, and she doesn't want to be here. Uh, isn't that interesting? Like, she's not getting to the ball fast enough. I bet if she doesn't want to be there... She's not getting to the ball fast enough because she doesn't want to. Right. Not because, not because she can't. She's not, not that interested. Fast. Exactly. So like, uh, I'll and run. I, but I, I spoke to her and I said to her, I was like, so if you weren't playing tennis, what would you Wait, want to do? Wait, Soph? No, it wasn't Soph. This was Chloe. Oh. She was really tall. You might have seen her. She's really, really tall. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, and she was saying to me, and I said to her, I was like, oh, so what do you want to do? If you don't want to play tennis anymore, that's fine. You don't have to lie to me. Like, I don't care either way. But what do you want to do? She was like, I want to play basketball. I was like, cool. Go play basketball. Like, you're 13 years old. Go do what you want to do. Did she, could she do it? Is she doing it? Yeah. Good. Yep. Done. Start playing basketball with her friends. Loves it. Amazing. But her parents pushed her, saw that she had some talent in tennis and she did, she loved tennis for a while, but she lost that interest, but they kept like pushing her and they were yeah, like, that's what happened, she said right. to me, she's like, my mum would, will say, my mum says to me that like, I'll regret it if I don't continue. I'm like, maybe you will, maybe you won't. I hate that shit. But why do something that you hate? When you're only 13. I mean, you might regret it. You might, but it's something that you're not going to know until later on in life. Yeah, I mean, one of those things is like, you, you can only force a child for so long before they rebel. And it's only sport. Against it. Right. It's only sport and she's leaving one sport for another sport. Right. It's not like she's leaving it's sport like she's for video nothing. games for three hours a night. Sure. Hey, but like we've talked about before, Video game addiction, all that stuff is real, but mm. it's also a, a real source of career and income now for people. Yes, I have seen this. Yeah? People make... Uh, people make insane amounts putting of videos dollars. of Come themselves on. on YouTube Come on. playing video games. Come on. It's like little... Uh, like m mom and dad who used to ridicule little Johnny for playing video games all day. I'm like, okay, you want to do that? Go make some money from it. Mm. Go compete. If you really want to do... Otherwise, look, you're going to have to have some different variety in your life because Down there are... Down plate for an hour, move on. Right, there, there are health detriments and mental detriments to being indoors all day, not moving Sitting sedentary. Sitting down for that long. Right? Yeah. So if you're going to do this, let's fucking do this. Hmm. Otherwise, let me show you some other shit in this life. It can be pretty cool, you know, whatever it is. Yep. Fucking anything. Yep. I agree. Do you think you'll be doing this in 10 years? 38, 39. 38? Or 38 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Almost 39. Um, I'd like to be, but who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. You, st you still think you'll be working with the human body? Or do you think, you know what, I might flip. Yeah, I think I'd do something with the human body, whether it's this or it's nursing or it's physio or it's, who knows? What about 10 years after that? It's a very long time to even think about, but I think about all the things that I'd like to do. I'd li there's a whole bunch of shit. I wish I could live multiple different lifetimes to try. But it's one of those things that's like so much can happen in that time. And, you know, you have so many things you want to do and see and overseas trips and whatever that who knows what opportunities are going to come your way. It's true. Just from being in the right place at the right time. Hmm. So you never really know. Like, I could say that I'd be coaching for the rest of my life, but you never really know. No, you don't. But you said you want to. I want to. I would like to. Well, I do enjoy it. I really enjoy it. What about... Actually, how has that changed over the last eight years? Because enjoyment changes. Like, you get different type of fulfillment and meaning out of it. Like, for me, I've realized that, like we talked about earlier um, in the upskill, teaching is mm. something that quite resonates with me. Um, doing a certificate three and four in fitness and so i can see how i want to exhaust that mm -hmm. vehicle but for you how, how do you think it might i know i'm asking a similar question over but i'm trying mm -hmm. to like get you thinking about like all right what's the what's the next vehicle for jess to explore this field in i don't know man yeah. i don't know i can't answer that question for you no, fair enough. i enjoy it i really enjoy it i the thing I enjoy is seeing people 
do things they didn't think they could do. Yes. Whether it's an athlete or a gen pop person, For doesn't sure. matter. It's the fact of, oh, I didn't know I could squat 80 kilos. You can. You've just done it five times. Yeah. You learn about the, yourself. Yeah. And watching them, you know, they'll come back and be like, oh, I did this. I never used to be able to do that. Yes, wait. That's awesome. That's, mm. that's why I'm here, to show you that you can do these things. When's the last time that happened? Uh, do you remember a time that really... didn't have to be last time. Do you remember a time that really, like, affected you? It's like, damn, that's... Like, um, for me, working with one of my clients, like, the big psychological gains are huge. Like, transforming who they... How, how they see themselves. Mm. Like, that's fucking... Yeah. Uh, actually, Benny showed me... Um, one of my clients showed me... I also taught him in the set three and four. I, you know, I always do the breathing after... Do the diaphragmatic feet up breathing. He showed me a photo. He's now training people. Of he got a group of people feet up breathing, and he showed me. It's like you know, it's not, look what I'm doing. I do it for mm. you. Taught me. It's like fuck yeah, man. Like, do you, what's what's your kind of thing of that? Um, so kind of related, kind of not to coaching, but this was actually the last time this happened, which was on the weekend. But um, my best friend, I'm not going to name her because I don't know if she wants to be named with this, but she has had a mental massive mental transformation in just the way she talks about herself and sees herself. So she has a lot of cellulite on her legs mm. and she would constantly say that as a bad thing and she'd constantly be like, Jess, you have no cellulite. I'm like, Man, I'm 28. And? Like, I don't care. It's not even something that I look at. I didn't know I had cellulite. I didn't know that I didn't have cellulite. Like, it just didn't occur to me. But she'd constantly be like, you don't have any. I have so much. Uh, you know, or she'd be like, you know, oh, her partner didn't like this stress on her and she'd be like, he saw all the cellulite and whereas in, on the weekend we went out to Chadson on the weekend we were shopping for a few things and she was like I don't even care anymore I'm going to wear these bathers without shorts and I don't care about my cellulite and I'm like yes mm. we get there finally we're getting somewhere we don't care what we look like we care how we feel we care about our health mm. and it's less about you know the little things of cellulite or this fat pocket or whatever and it's more about you know, embracing the body you've got because these legs are what make you walk around every day. These legs, whether they've got cellulite or not, is what helps you squat, helps you, you know, pick up little kids, helps you do all these things. Who cares if they've got cellulite? Yeah. And it's like you got to control what you can control and, and kind of make peace with mm. things you can't. I kind of need to put out there though, she is 41. Okay. To put out there with the age discrepancy sort of thing. Like that's, right. I feel like that's it. Because age is a factor in that stuff. Yeah, exactly. But another thing I think with women is stretch marks too. Yes. Right? They're a and big one. look, if you've gotten stretch marks from being overweight or obese and that's happened to you, fuck. You know what? It happens, right? But if you're telling me you got stretch marks then from weight training, from changing your body in a good way, slimming down, fuck yeah. Fuck it. That's like that's like tattoos of fucking winning. Tattoos mm. of of marks of your growth mm -hmm. the world or some people might see it as unattractive or unappealing or whatever the fuck you got are they the people you really want to be spending time with for sure if that's the way they see it you got to reframe that, it yeah is that the people you really want to be spending time with right or have an inner partner is someone who you know worries about your stress marks or right. your cellulite doesn't matter how big or small you are right you got to reframe the way you think about things correct and it's like you're either going to use it to create a self-destructive mentality or you're either going to use it to build yourself up. Mm -hmm. It's our choice, but people get stuck. Like, I think that's one of the most difficult things is that I realize in this profession that how do we make people unstuck? How do we help people become unstuck? Because we don't do it. They do it. We're mm -hmm. just like a small vehicle to just let them go. Mm -hmm. How do you... Like, how do you do it? Or do you want a more specific question? Because I know it's kind of general. How do I do that? This is a good question. Like people who have like self-destructive habits, that they're, they're in a rut, they're maybe not training as consistently, but you're doing something to them, push them to just fucking start killing it. You ask some leading questions to start off with. Like Why does it matter so much? Why does it matter so much to you that you have stretch marks, have cellulite? Yeah. insert issue here yeah. why does it matter so much to you 
and then they kind of go, oh, uh, I, it just does. Well, why? There's got to be a reason why. And then you've got to kind of, yeah, work with that. And then it also comes down to one of those things again of like starting small. How do you change a habit? You start small. Hmm. You know, is this something that you want to instill in your children? The way you talk about yourself. Oh, I like that. That's powerful. Especially if you're thinking to have kids or have kids. Hmm. So my best friend's got a kid. And I say to her, do you, you don't want to teach your, your child, I was going to say her name. You don't want to teach your child that, do you? You might, then that's okay. But if you don't, you got to change the way you talk about yourself. Yeah. Not just in front of her, but all the time. Because if it's just in front of her, at some point, something's going to slip. You're going to say something to me or to someone else while she's in the room and not realize she's listening. It's a great way to frame it. It's like for people who get into self-destructive ways of thinking, how would you feel if your best friend talked to themselves the way you talk to yourself? Would you treat yourself... Would you talk to yourself... the would you talk to someone else the way you talk to yourself? Right. Oh, yeah. And if you really think about that, yeah, that's a great question to ask. Like, and you, oftentimes you can't. Because could you imagine if I was like, I really hate my stomach, it's so fat. And then I turned to you and was like, Alex, I really hate your stomach, it's so fat. Like, how rude is that? Now, I'm, I'm a bit of a different cat. Like, you know I use perceived negativity and I use that to propel me for to excellence to something greater Mm -hmm. like I want you to tell me I'm a piece of shit so that I can show you exactly what the fuck I'm made of I feel like that's a rarity though in a person not you can't not not everyone is like that the majority of people aren't like that the majority of people will take that and will spiral out they'll of control. They'll internalize it. Yep. Right. And they'll run with a story that's not even true. Mm, someone else's story. Yeah. And they'll just end up over here. And then that's how, that's how things like drugs, suicide, mental health problems happen. Because they can't pull themselves out of the story. Yeah. Damn. You can't, when you think about that's it. That's it. And they're like using those outlets as a way to... Escape from the story. To escape from the story. That's fucking good. How do you escape from the story? You've got to bring yourself back from the story. How? You've got to recognise that it's a story to start off with. That's number one. And so when you think about it, these people with mental health problems and drug issues and alcoholism and gambling and all that sort of stuff, they've run away with a story somewhere and they're trying to escape from that story by going down this road. You know what else? I think a lot of the times the story people get told when they're a child. Yeah. Like childhood trauma shit. Oh, definitely. I think it's such a big topic that is quite difficult to maneuver through, but I think we see it. I think we see it when we work with people, especially we talk about non-athletes who, well, we may not get as deep. We talk Mm -hmm. about general people Mm -hmm. who are just doing it for general health. It's like, all right, why do you really want this? Why is this really important to you? And then it's like, oh, why are you actually missing your trainings? It's a lot deeper than a fucking, like, health and wellness is a lot deeper than the superficial. Oh, 100%. For everybody. 100%. Yeah, you want a great physique. Yeah, you want to feel better. But what the fuck does that mean? What does feel better mean? I think a lot of times people just, they don't want to talk to themselves as bad as they do and like, I think uh, people have an issue with getting real with themselves. Oh yeah. As well, let alone getting real with someone else. When you ask them what they want out of the gym, you know what they're going to say: either weight loss, or you know, strength, or something physical, and feel better. But then why? Yeah, why? That's all very superficial stuff. We all know that the the benefits exercise has on mental health. For sure. We all know it. Yep. Research it's is well very publicized. Clear. Well publicized. You know, you've got the ads on TV that tell you how good it is. Right. Everybody knows what the fuck to do. Don't they, Jeremy Borzillo? Uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> We're just here to guide them with it. Everyone knows that exercise and eating well is what's, you know, going to be good for the body and good for the mind. We're just here to remind them that and to push them towards that. 
I think provide and even more accurately provide a framework to which they can be successful at that. Because yep. a lot of times people don't have the structure and framework to like, how do I actually do this? Mm. How do I do it in a way that works for me personally? And I think that's where the coach comes in and every human being on the planet can benefit from a coach. Bro, pull up a chair. <laughs> Come see it. If you want. Well, if you want, you could put your hand up like you're in a school cl- uh, class. Let's share a mic, Brick. Um, Hello. Uh, I think as, um, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think as a coach, like, something that I've done as well, it's just, you got to call yourself out on that sort of bullshit as well. And that's something that I've done in terms of my own thing as well. Like, it's going to be fucking, if you're doing shit, just say you're doing shit. Like, it's fucking, cause, it causes no damage to yourself and you can get better and you can get your clients better as well we as coaches are going to be facilitators all right we're all going to ha- um try and help out everyone these guys like uh, our, our clients could do this sort of stuff without without us in terms of like we're not necessarily like obviously learn the movement stuff like, obviously us but like the diet sort of stuff is still it can be done outside but it's like we're going to give them the like inspiration and like the knowledge and that's what's like okay well, this is what you need to do with certain choices and stuff rather than them just like you know fucking going willy nilly and doing whatever but they can do it it's obviously it's more mental so it's like it's all mental yeah and that's that's how I sort of I've, I've had a major shift like that in terms of seeing with clients and stuff and their sort of self image and stuff and it's like they can fucking do it like it's not it's not hard for them to do it it's just like a lot of people including myself when I went through when um, losing weight just like you just gotta fucking I don't know call yourself out and go fuck I can do it it's not my, my trainer's job is still gonna get, get me like stronger whatever the fuck you wanna get to but this is a role that I wanna sort of I have the tools at my disposal why don't I use them and people don't people just justify they go oh I'll do this yada 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 but it's like fuck uh, yeah anyways <laughs> they lie to themselves man that's all right. yeah you gotta call yourself out very well said yeah. and that's where it comes back to everyone's very superficial like everyone, no one wants to get real with themselves. Let me rephrase that. No one wants to get real with themselves. Everyone wants those superficial goals because they're easy. Well, they're not easy to get, but they're the easy ones to identify. No one wants to get super real with themselves and go, okay, well, why do I want that? Is it because someone when I was six told me I was fat? Mm. And for, since then I've had this Your thing story. that I'm fat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The story. Yeah. And because often, look, being overweight is a real thing. Like it's oh, sure. it's not fabricated, but for some women and men, like it is fabricated. It's like physiologically, no, you're not overweight. No, you're not fat. But you have this image in your head that you are. And it comes down to as well how again how people talk to themselves. Yes. Do you identify yourself as fat, mm. or do you have fat? Ah, great question. Because we all have that. We need it, guys. Insulation, hormones. Fuck, we need it. It's a function. Mm-hmm. Girls need more but, than guys Yes. for all those things. Yes. And we know when we see uh, a great way to see uh, whether you're losing too much body fat where you've gone too far as a female is uh, amenorrhea mm-hmm. or oligomenorrhea, which is an abs- oligomenorrhea being an absence of uh, uh, inconsistency of the menstrual cycle. Um, am- amenorrhea, amenorrhea, I'm saying it fucking up, is the full absence of the menstrual yeah. cycle. So that's, and you see that with professional athletes mm-hmm. a lot of times. Mm-hmm physique models oh definitely and uh that's the extreme end Mm -hmm. but it's like let's take it back to like so do you remember um my client amy amy she was super skinny she was um a dancer okay she was about 15 or 16 when she was training with me didn't have a period didn't have it. We had just gotten it back before she stopped training with me hot she never had her she she got it okay but then she lost it she yeah. was ridiculously skinny. Yeah. Like she was a dancer and ridiculously skinny and hardly ate. And I was literally, I was working with her dad constantly. She doesn't know this. Sorry, Amy, if you're watching. Um, talking with her dad and trying to like work out what we can say to her to get her to eat a little bit more and to just look at food and stuff like that a little bit differently to get her to put on a little bit of weight. Not so she, you know, lost her abs or anything like that, but just enough so she'd get her period back because mm. that's super healthy, uh, super unhealthy if you don't have it. Absolutely. I mean, you got to figure out like, and that, that, may be, you need, that, that may be best to see someone like a therapist to uncover the reasons. Mm. All right, why do I perceive myself like this? Mm-hmm. 
or it can even be just some nice some some tactful probing questions from from the coach mm. and like sitting down and if you have that rapport you know you learn all right why do you feel inadequate oh it's because um your uncle and your peers around you never said anything positive about you when you were growing up you never got any positive reinforcement everything was do better and negative oh sometimes you just need someone to believe in you a little bit right that you actually have self-worth in this world yeah. and that you can do things yes and that you're gonna be great at them and you're probably gonna fail the first time and that's okay but you'll eventually get good and it's okay yeah if you work at it mm. if you're consistent mm-hmm. um but you have to be uh i don't know i think I don't think you can be always kind with yourself. I do have to, you have to have an element of like self-criticism and like oh, you do. authenticity that all right, 100%. fuck. You know what? It's about finding that balance. Yeah. And recognizing that you have screwed up yeah. and screwing up is okay occasionally yeah. and people are going to criticize you and that's okay. You've just got to work out who you listen to and why do you listen to these particular people, whether they're mentors or their parents or are they friends or are they bullies? Like who are you listening to? Why are you listening to them? And do their opinions matter to you? Yes or no? Mm. Not everyone's opinion needs to matter to you. Because that's a big thing online, fucking, with um, young kids coming up, is just concept of like online bullying and all that sort of oh, stuff. Yeah. And it's like the fact that, especially with like diet and stuff, you see well, the, in- the Insta, you know, girls, the Insta, Insta models. Or, Insta models. And all the guys that like, a lot of younger males just looking at like, Guys are like big and jacked, and you're like, "Fuck." Mm. What's it like, like for guys on on social media? Uh, go, you go first. All right. It's a good um, question. When I, I was, can't when this. I was younger, it was because we're we're both coming from opposite spectrums. Yeah. Hmm. Right. I'm coming from the the skinny guy <laughs> who's natu- naturally not big and strong. You're coming yeah. from the bigger guy. The well, thick- here's the thing as well. Like, so when I was. Um, when I was going through school, I was rel- okay. So at the start, I was a little bit chubbier, yeah. relatively skinny, going into year 11, 12. Yeah. and then I was skinny, a little bit bigger, bigger, and then back down. I don't know. I just I I feel like it's a lot of like I feel social media is a lot of like sort of like bodybuilders and stuff, and I was like, well, this is how you gotta get jacked, and it was just fucking bullshit. Like I reckon I wasted two, three years with that sort of stuff, like trying to look like these guys are unattainable. And you look now, they're unattainable. Be like, fuck, oh, I wish I was like X or this person X or whoever the fuck. Like, well, hold on, they're not unattainable because people have done them. People look like oh, that. Okay. It's attainable. Uh, uh, on, on drugs, fucking. If you take drugs, like I'm talking about, like the big bodybuilders. If you're taking drugs, obviously gonna, it's gonna be natural versus unnatural. That's It'll be the, other, the that. other end of the spectrum. Right. The other yeah. end of like the extreme, I guess you could call it. I get it. You feel inadequate, but yeah, well, yeah, you feel inadequate. I. For a long time, I, I've felt inadequate in the way I've looked, uh, the way, I don't know, I look at myself and I, I still feel those feelings. I, it's just how it is. Like, I don't know, you just sort of, you look, look like young males coming through, if they don't look a particular way, mm-hmm. they don't feel a particular way, they feel like shit, they feel like, you know, yeah, it's just, it's just, not, a, I don't know, it's just not a good feeling coming up. But that was my experience with social media and all that sort of stuff. I don't know about your well, sort of you said you felt inadequate. It's very honest of you to say. But what did you do with I those? Express a lot for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what oh, happens. Damn it, you're so, you're so probing. We all get in our feelings. You're so fucking probing in this interview. <laughs> Not an interview, bro. You see these questions? None. Oh, gee. Thinking it on the spot, baby. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, you said you felt inadequate. It's I, very... I did a lot. Like, even now I feel inadequate, man. I just... It is what it is. So I go just... Why? I don't know. Just you do, but I'm, I'm not. I don't know. I don't See, know. and this point right here is what you need to get through yes. as a coach. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is this? Why do you feel that way? Oh, I don't know. I just do. Well, why? Where's that story coming from? Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you have to reach it by as you're doing, asking different questions. Yeah. And it's not going to happen in one session. Right. Yeah. This is. If this is something that's you know a six month. That's what I'm saying. Job. If it took you ten years, if if you've been feeling like this for ten years. It's going to take fucking some time to unfuck yourself. Mm. It might take some years. It's like you don't go to therapy for one session. Right. It's not a magic pill. No. Yeah. 
It takes work. So we're going to need to do these a couple times, Jeremy Borzillo. Oh, no. A couple talking chimps. Oh, uncover no. the Borzillo. One layer at a time Gee, like an onion. Well, you don't, want to, you don't want to know too much about me. I don't know. I don't <laughs> we want to know all about you. Yes. Oh, what crimes have you committed, Borzillo? Well, yeah, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot? <laughs> I'm a very just... Just so a few. there's something. Yeah, yeah Jimmy J walked last week. <laughs> you know, ran a red light. No, I find that, I find that interesting, yeah. Um... You, you go and ask about what your social media thoughts, like what you. Felt I like. I felt similar. That yeah. that feeling of inadequacy, I think, is common among so many people, especially young men, young women, looking, uh, looking up to these people as inspiration. I, I look at it as as in some ways, it's like it's a lot of ways it's like an inspiration. Like I look at everybody from Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, to Kevin Hart, to to professional athletes, to goddamn any anybody that I admire and look up to, and that their ex other people's excellence i think can reflect inadequacy in yourself because it's like what it, it just telling you it's giving you feedback what about myself have i not am i not complete with am i not uh doing great mm -hmm. what do i need to work on i think the inadequacy reflects something that you need to work on uh, it, but oftentimes it can be distorted oftentimes it's like it's based on false narratives and 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 stories that you tell yourself right that aren't true but i think for a lot of the times especially with me i would i would guess with you as well it's like well guess what basically before i left for singapore i made a decision like i can't come back the same person i you know i came back i went fucking hard i put i put on five six kilos of muscle mass now we're trying to get to the next level right where did that come from why did i do that well i felt inadequate about who i was my uh, physical presence, it was, became really paramount and important to me that just like I don't th I think it's acceptable to have an over overweight and obese health professional, I, like a doctor or a health coach or whatever, I don't think it's acceptable to be really skinny. We don't treat them the same, but I look at them as very similar. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, fuck it. This is unacceptable. I'm looking at old videos of me. I'm like, damn, no one told me I was fucking really scrawny and skinny. I was athletic. I moved really well. I was well-rounded. But that's also a sense of perception, right? It is a sense of perception. So it's my perception. You think that's, yeah. But the people at the time probably didn't think you were super skinny. Right. They probably thought that you were athletic and they wanted to be like you. We've got those goggles on, Jess. We've got those goggles on. We're looking at sandals. I'm like, oh, he's, he's looking good. <laughs> and then, that's what it was. And he's like, mm, nah, not yeah, looking well, good at all. That's, that's fucking a good point. Yeah. But like there's a certain level of excellence and standards. Everyone has their own standards. Mm -hmm. What level of standards everyone has is different mm -hmm. so i think especially if you're going to work in this field our standards have to be well above average right at least for me that's what i'm gonna i'm gonna live up to because it's not just strength and conditioning it's not just personal training it's like all the things that are alpha is this i was i'm trying to be the best journalist possible like i have to embody like supreme health in every capacity possible psychologically to blood health to gut to fucking physical strength and so one of the biggest ways is to transform your physical presence and your physical health. Mm -hmm. If you embody something that's truly excellent, don't you think that's going to inspire others around you? Don't you think that being the product is one of the best ways to demonstrate to the world that you, you are the product and you have something worthy to sell? And yeah, that is a bit superficial, but I think it starts there because your physical presence reflects your character. So I'm going to transform my physical presence and who I am and my strength and my size and the physical feats that I can do um, because I know that's going to reflect my character and who I am as a person because I originally felt inadequate about who I was. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's fucking sums it up really well. Actually, it makes a lot of great points. Like, you can't, and whereas, like, for example, with physical health and stuff, if that's all you got going, like, if that's what you believe in terms of that sort of stuff. And that's gonna help your character. It's gonna help people around you. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Why wouldn't you get that better? Yeah. It's, yeah. So I give you so much positive reinforcement, and why I also yeah. keep putting pressure on you. I like to keep going, man. You <laughs> no. got you built the momentum. I sort of I like I I like your reasoning about why you sort of you say oh I like people telling me I'm like a piece of shit or whatever. So then I'll get better. Like I find that interesting, but it's it's a very good point. Like so as said like some people most people don't feed off of that no but if i tell someone they're you know <laughs> yeah they're fat or this or that especially like yeah especially if you're going to tell, tell to um a woman as well and you, you tell them that like You're very touchy yeah. to, sure. to a woman now I, yeah, giving that, like, like which i wouldn't like because 
yeah, it's you're a beautiful not. human brick. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, why you yeah. C- Communication <laughs> and feedback, like, you got to be tactful about the way you yeah. do it. You can't, you don't want to be an asshole about it. You know what I find interesting? Communication and feedback between giving it to a woman and giving it to a man. Yeah, guess what? So we're, different. We're different people. And I always wonder why. Why is it so different? Like, obviously, you have your outliers where, you know, you get super sensitive men, so you kind of give them feedback like you'd give it to a woman mm. and, you know, vice versa. But I find that really interesting that it's quite different and that you can be a lot harsher with a male obviously like within certain boundaries yeah but you can be a lot harsher with a male but you can't with a woman right because we're just so i I don't know if sensitive is the right word but like we just take it so differently right what i think is quite a few reasons from that historically um culturally um genders have played different roles our genders have played different roles throughout history and now they're becoming as well they're evolving and changing why do you think that is, though? I have answers, but what's your answers? Society. I think the culture we have today is that um, is that girls are, you know, these super precious beings and that guys are, you know, big and macho, like you would see on social media, right? And so then that social media has infiltrated real life and so now we treat women with such delicate cotton wool. Mm. I think that was also very present even 50 to 100 years ago during, maybe this isn't the most relevant, maybe I'm not entirely correct, but I don't know. Ju- yeah, I'll tell it anyway. Females. Alex, it's all good. Histori- <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> guys. Thanks for your support. <laughs> Females histor- historically have had, uh, ro- uh, what's the word? Home. Home, uh, home wife. What's it? What's home it called? Maker. Yeah, like it's, it's like okay. So males go like the hunt gatherer yeah, type. Yeah, get, yeah. Get, yeah, yeah, get the food, and make the money, get the yeah. bread, all that sort of bullshit. Yeah, and then females and fucking t- just tend to be the more nurturing. Yeah. The, well, they they uh, they house the the infant. You know, it's an amazing role, such an important role that really demands respect. It's an amazing thing. So by that product, they. Fall into a nurturing role, uh, just by the nature of that, and so I think it makes sense why these roles have been more feminized and masculinized. And there's always exceptions, like there's um, in uh, what 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 is it, uh, Maoist China, or is it the? There has been many tribes who've like where women have had positions of authority throughout history as well, and they have they have organized um, tactical. Uh, positions of like military decisions as well Mm. so it's like it's not a one size fits all thing but I think to your point as well Jess yes society historically has looked at women in a certain and men in a certain ways but I think also those they're being those boundaries and those ideas are being also remade and broken now because like now it's like you don't just have to be the dainty petite woman you can be the motherfucking thick fucking badass woman who like a strong woman or a crossfit woman who's really who's like strong and 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 thick and beautiful and who embodies strength in their own way and doesn't have to do it in the the supermodel way mm-hmm. but that's and that's the thing that's always got me as well what what guys are what guys i guess prefer the supermodel look i don't know that's always got me as far like alex I don't know. Do you prefer, like, um, the supermodel sort of? The type of woman that you prefer. I prefer. I'm. I'm a simple man. (laughs) (laughs) What does that mean? I know. I know you got a. You know, a a girlfriend. I think (laughs) that my preference has come down to evolution. Basically, the type of woman that uh, I'm attracted to is the one who has the most evolutionary advantage to procreate and that is represented by the hourglass figure the wider hips wait the hips not the yeah. waist no the, the wider hips the narrow waist and that hourglass figure that is a woman who can hold some babies right that ticks some old old wiring in my brain that I, that that works for me so the stick figure model that those wirings um 
don't activate for those women as much. But w- women can be beautiful and attractive on all spends of oh, the yeah, spectrum. No, it's, I love all women. What can I say? <laughs> what, well, no, what can you say? <laughs> That's a very safe answer, Brick. <laughs> Do you love all men too? Because I don't love all men. Nah. Some women are assholes, Brick. Nah. And sometimes, you know. And some men That's are true. Assholes. I'm not going to argue with that. You some know, women are assholes. Just people. Oh, no, I don't like it. We get like versus, men versus women. And then there's all these other groups. Just people. Mm. We're all human. We're homo sapiens. Mm-hmm. I'm on team fucking human. What team are you on? Team human. Team human, baby. I'd like to be on team human. Yeah. You'd like to be on team yeah, human? We have an opening, Brick. <laughs> um, it's it's open. got your name written all over it. <laughs> we have one application left. I reckon, Would yeah. you like to be the, uh, that application? Why not? I guess uh, if I'm here. Uh, what are you going to say? Um, oh, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. It's all good. Okay. Well, what were you saying just before uh, about... Uh, How far back are we going? <sighs> We've done this a few times in this this podcast. Oh yes, we have. Yeah. Um, well, go back to the social media part. Yes. Um, being the only, the first female on Talking Chimps, congratulations. Thank you. Um, number two, um, being coaching in this industry as a female and seeing that world very well. What do you see as kind of those biggest problems within the the industry with the female stereotype and stigma? Um to come back to the story again I find that we just buy into the story so much I mean yes there's actual bullying where people are you know calling each other names and stuff like that but if we take that out and we're just talking about what we see and how that makes us feel I think people just buy into the story we all know what social media does it's so much so talked about now with all the mental health stuff that's going on and the bullying that's going on we all know the effect social media has on people we all know that it's you know people will see what they want like you know these bodybuilders and supermodels or whatever it is and go why don't I look like that why can't I look like that for whatever reason right but people will still buy into that story knowing what it does so people will still look at their feeds and go I want to look like that why don't I look like that for whatever reason you know I've got a stomach I've got legs I've got booty whatever but I don't look like that and then they send themselves into this spiral and buy into this story rather than being like, you know what? I don't look like that and that's okay. I can unfollow that person and it's going to be okay. Mm, and it's not going to have an effect and no one's going to yell at me because they've got 50,000 50, other followers anyway. What do they care if they lose one? They'll get another one in the next 24 hours to replace me. They probably haven't even noticed that you've unfollowed them. I believe everyone needs to look at their social media and go through a cleanse bro everyone preach this mic could not get closer to my mouth everyone go through it there's a couple of people that we know that need to get on that call them out who christian fucking woodford (laughs) you fucking addicted monkey chimp uh was he sitting here like on his phone while he was on the podcast no he had to pull something up to give him give him a bit of um He's up on him. He had to actually pull something up that okay, he wanted to read. That's all right. It wasn't yeah, we're, purposeful. We all fuck around, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a reason I follow zero people on social media, okay. and there, there there's a reason before that that I also did that. You did a cleanse of like, okay, what what's your circle, okay? Because your circle, you're the average of the people you spend the most time mm-hmm. around. We always talk about that, Three. but we only think about that usually with the people we spend time in real life. Well, guess what? If you look at your screen time, you are spending a tremendous amount of time with a whole bunch of other people, mm-hmm. sometimes more than in real life. Mm-hmm. So who are those people? What are those videos? Wh- those people will become the average of your thoughts and habits. So if all you, fo- if the majority of what you're following is big booty motherfucking chicks or, or ripped, jacked uh, men, um, look, they may represent excellence to you and that, that may be inspiring to you. Hell yeah. But at what point does inspiring change? What point is it no longer inspiring? Yes. And is it detrimental to your mental health? And that's what I noticed. I did a video on my YouTube channel about this. Um, I basically, I did a little experiment on myself. Mm-hmm. Usually people take detox from social media. I decided to do the opposite. I decided to post every single day for about three months or something. Mm-hmm. I did it and I monitored and observed and note took my psychological habits mm-hmm. through it. Because I was noticing a number of things. One, envy and jealousy. I experienced this. Too often than I would like to. So why? What is this envy and jealousy? Why am I experiencing it? Well, what does it really mean? Okay. And then I discovered, well, 
these feelings have been associated with like negativity. Mm-hmm. Like you feel envy or jealousy. That's not, a, that's not a productive feeling to feel. Well, I've realized that envy is just highlighting traits that I find attractive and that I want in myself that I may not have. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, gives you a bit of temporary discomfort and mental anguish in the moment of like feeling that. It's like, fuck, shit, I'm not good enough. I'm inadequate. Back to what we're talking about. So, all right, what am I going to do about it? Am I going to constantly just feel this like, because it can mess your day up. You see something like that, you be like, fuck. And to cut you off, this is where most people stop. Right. They feel this envy. Uh Uh-huh. And they just keep scrolling. Yes. And they feel more envy. Spiral. And they keep scrolling. Positive and feedback then they, loop. Yeah. And then they spiral. And oh. they run away with the story. Right. They disregard it. They disregard what they're feeling. They go, oh, I feel like shit. Oh. Well, yeah. Better like look shit. at someone uh. else who makes me feel like shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Try and like, get to the next high. Why would you want to do that to yourself? Well, I don't think people make the connection. And so let's make the connection, understand what emotions are we feeling? How are they resourceful to us? Because it was resourceful. It highlighted a problem in myself. All right. Um, people have these traits and it, it, that I, need, I want to assimilate into myself. Okay. So then I decided, okay, well, it's distracting mentally to mm-hmm. constantly get bombarded with this stuff and constantly be feeling those emotions. So, and I'm someone who didn't even look at this stuff often. Like I might, I'm talking like five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day maybe. But even that is enough to, I can fucking imagine hours. Mm. Fuck, five, five to 10 minutes. Right. But like, think about it, like yeah. five to 10 minutes of on a social media platform scrolling is actually quite a bit of time. I'm not talking about time I'm strategically posting or, or doing something yeah, productive. Just, just scrolling. I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking about absorption, yeah. consumption. Fucking this, we live in a society that's just so over consumption, but that's another thing. So I realized envy and jealousy, okay. I'm gonna unfold everybody, sorry, no, no disrespect but I got to do what I got to do to work on my mental health. So I did that. And then I noticed a little bit of peace. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah. And you know what else it forces you to do? Have conversations with people. (sighs) Do this. Because then you don't, you don't actually know what the fuck your friends are doing in in online. You don't actually know where they're going or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Hey, where you been? Oh, I didn't know you weren't there. Of course you don't, but that can be a negative as well. And that's the thing with two, um, two of my best friends, like, as I was telling Sandals um, in my podcast, like, I've been best friends with these guys for a long time, and we've started recently just opening up about a lot of things, and it's just, it helps you so fucking much. Like, I've learned, and that's um, with the stuff that I've gone through um, in the past, yeah, not me personally, other people, but it's just helped me be a better, try to be a better person. I wouldn't say, like, I don't know, it's just, it's getting towards it, but like, you open up about a lot of shit, so I talking about mental health, how are you feeling, what's going on with this, um, Jacob Willey, he was on this podcast, he was talking about it, and he's like, if your conversation just finishes with, you know, hey, young bro, yeah, good, it's like, well, fuck, what else are you doing like that, or like, let's get fucking smashed, let's go to, you know, drinks on a Friday night, it's like, well, what the fuck are you doing, like, that's just, mm. it's fucking bullshit, like, especially males as well, and obviously it would be with females as well, you get into those chats, you actually like start talking about your feelings so it's all about issues it helps so fucking much mm-hmm. in terms of um just your mental psyche as well like um everyone's just very you know we all like to be you know when we're around each other it's all like oh good vibes and so hey how you going hey how you going like i like i'll ask you guys how you going as well but then sometimes and what's what's the usual response yeah good how are you <laughs> yeah i'm good keep walking but then but then like isn't that right we do it all the time we walk in sure. here hey alex how you going yeah i'm good and cool. Also, no, no, uh, th- there's a, I think there's also a reason for that. Like, we're, we're all here for a purpose. Yeah. We're not here for, like, to be social. We're here to coach. We're here to train. We're here to fucking go, right? But we, we need to create space to allow conversations. Yeah, for sure. Go. Yeah, and that's, that's. Sorry, a, continue, Brie. Oh, sorry. Well, that's the thing. Like, even um, me coming through here during this time and, like, being yourself, being you, Jess, as well, like, talking to you just about like i don't know whatever whatever's going on and stuff and um i love our morning chats <laughs> yeah it's just it's fucking they're it's, always entertaining <laughs> i try my best with it but yeah no it's it's cool like i just um when i was and we like meet a range of different people here as well and it's just real just i don't know it's helped me 
personally in terms of just interacting with different people and you just open up a dialogue with someone and as I said you learn, for these podcasts you learn something new about everyone we chat we like discuss what's going on um, I didn't want know you wanted to be a fucking heart surgeon as well like that's fucking crazy I don't, like but it, it's just yeah I think the mental health especially for males as well and just talking as I was saying sorry with my friends going back to my initial point mm. just chatting and just talking to someone just getting to know them getting to know what they're about and just discussing all the shit that we keep bottled up inside is going to help everyone so much that's why mental health and why it's so much of an issue especially in male society it's like we all just want to keep shit hidden we're like oh we don't want to appear too fucking like fragile we don't want to appear mm. too fucking weak. like like honestly like I'm sort of veering far away from that as I can like I try not to like I still, I still do but like I'll, I'll you know try and pers- like do my true self and sometimes it's a bit fucking dorky sometimes it's a bit you know a bit you know different but that's just it's just different is good brick yeah I don't know different it's just is good different different environment for you. there's nothing wrong yeah, with being think, different yeah and I think yeah well that, well, that, well, that sort of stuff's going to pay off in the um, long run you're just chatting about issues and stuff like that good we're man gonna be, we're going to be diatribe about nothing but <laughs> no, it's not nothing it's a show about nothing it's <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld yeah. classic no I I, I I definitely value it like um, yeah and knowing, knowing you guys as well in terms of all this sort of stuff has helped me tremendously and um, as I don't know it might help you guys as well but just getting to know everyone here just it just creates a, a safe space but also just allows you to just be yourself as well and just like start opening up to people a bit more and it just yeah going off the tongue mental health yeah mental health is just so it's just so fucked in terms of how what we sort of think question for you yeah how has social media affected your mental health? Has it affected your mental uh, health? Well, I said I didn't... I don't really... I haven't really had bouts of depression or anything like that, but I've just... I've felt down at times because you're like, well, yeah, as we talked about, see certain things, it doesn't look good, this doesn't look good. Um, but, yeah, I still get down in certain in certain things. I still get... You know, even here, like, I'll, I'll get down at times during the day, like, I'm happy, and then I'm... And like, I'll go up, and then I'll go down, and then i go up. Just What's triggers to that? Depends who I see during the day as well. I might be a bit sort of yeah up and down and, to, and like what's going on at home, what's going on with my own brain. Like I might be like up here and I'm like, I want to get the fuck out of here. So, like sometimes, it's not all the time, but sometimes like I just cannot be fucked. Which I don't know if that's mental, it's just more me being a bit lazy. But <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just interesting like that. Like I feel... I don't know what caused it. I just know that I feel those feelings. So, yeah. Well, the step one is recognizing it. Step two would be, what's the triggers? Reverse engineer the triggers. And it's because yeah. like, that's how you realize whether the, the habits and the things that you're doing are resourceful to you. Because you, you don't want, if you feel like that every day, that's a problem. You probably don't. But if you do, yeah, I probably a problem. Yeah. What about you, Jess? How, like, what's your relationship with the wild beast of social media? Especially as a female who I would say have more propensities towards... Mm, how would I say? What do females have more propensities to with mental mental issues and emotions on social media? What emotions would you describe that fam- males, females experience differently? Um, social media is really interesting because I find that generally speaking, if you say you're good all the time and things are great and it's a highlight reel, everyone goes, you're fake. But as soon as you jump on your story and you're like, you know what, guys, I've had a bad day. This is why right. everyone go. Yeah, everyone jumps on it and they're like, why would you post something like that? For real? Yeah. Have you done this? I haven't done this. No. Okay. But I, I, my, I treat my social media slightly differently. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just find that as a society, we're all so quick to jump on something. And it's like, well, you can't show that. It's supposed to be a highlight reel of your life. Why are you, why are you saying that? Or they're then you know the bullying starts coming out and it's just yeah i'm not i'm not the biggest fan of social media um i so i read a book that completely changed my mindset oh here we go on a lot of different things what's a book so it's written by melissa ambrosini shout out i love her shout out she's obviously watching (laughs) hopefully big fan melissa well i will send it to her and see what happens yes (laughs) um her book is called mastering your mean girl Mm. and while it is very directed towards females. I think a lot of males would benefit from it too. And it's all about changing the way you think 
changing the way you think about yourself, the way you think about society. And it's really, yeah, it's just changed the way I look at things. And I think that, um, like, when I post things on social media, I do my best not to care about things like the likes, who's liked them, in specifically who's liked them, who hasn't liked I think them, not how many it's likes. It's great what Facebook and Instagram have done. Oh, I'm a massive fan of yeah, getting rid fan. of the, the tally. Uh, to interrupt you, but mm. purposefully, I want, I want the option to not see my following. I don't care if other people can see it. I mm. want the option for me not to see it. Mm. Because you're always going to your home page feed to, to, to do something. To make a post, you always have to go to the home page. Yeah. You have to see the count. Yeah. I don't want to see the count because that's another thing that can, that can play on people's oh, minds. Oh, it screws with people, especially with the amount of bots and stuff that will like your page and then unlike your page. And you're like, well, why did I just drop five followers? Mm. Especially if you're not in the hundreds of thousands or the millions. And you get it because it's like, you can tie your self-worth as a person even a little bit, mm. even a little bit into your status, superficial status. And it's like, it's like these tools because I just think social media is a tool. I don't think it's good or bad. I think it's just a tool. Mm. It's like a knife, right? Um, it's how we utilize it. I think these tools are so intelligently made or accidentally so intelligently made that they have been able to take over our brain chemistry and wiring and fucking be able to transform it in, in, in a whole myriad of positive and negative ways. Do you, do you want me to say? <laughs> oh, no, 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 you summed it up well. Like, the the well. pause is okay, man. So no, I treat pause. my Instagram well. as my sort of depending on the photos, my personal <laughs> photo gallery. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. That's it. That's all it's there for. It's to put it on the internet. So if I do back. what I've done before and accidentally delete my entire gallery on my phone, yeah. not it's joking, I've done that and I was absolutely devastated. Shit. It's all on the internet. If I would need to look back on it, I just go through my Instagram. Oh, I, I, I like the, that it can be a documentation. It can be an online photo gallery. And I use my Facebook for recommendations in particular. Yeah. When I'm like, uh, oh, I wonder if anyone knows a good plumber or you know has been to a particular restaurant or just put it up there yep. to see what response i get i think facebook is also good for you can aggregate the exact amount of information that you want from an education perspective yeah i like these tools of social media for that like it can be extremely educational and so you can really aggregate a really great feed on like that can really just uplift you and bring you up i purposefully um, don't use it for anything else though right so, so I'm a part of a few different groups, um, like Facebook groups and stuff, depending on my interests and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't really, I very rarely post on it. Mm. Like I'll like people's stuff and comment on people's photos and stuff like that. But um, I don't really use it for much else. Oh, I never see work stuff. But other than that, I don't really use it for much else purposefully. I'll, I'll use it for lifting and I'll just go, this is my lifts. I like that. Yeah, I, I've started using a bit more um, personal sort of touch to it as well. So... So, um, a couple of posts I've done personal sort of stuff but I just like I just go this is what I, this is what I do um, I don't even write critiques of I just go these are my lifts so I felt during the week I really yeah. like how you're documenting that yeah. especially as like uh, a health professional like yeah. having a source to document who you are and what you do I think is important because now it's an online resume who are you like someone wants to go hire you hey take a look at this see if you like what I'm doing so the interesting thing about that is I find that people, including myself, want to get to know the person as well, right? So if you're all business, whether it's lifting or, you know, whatever, insert your business here. If it's all business, what are you? Who are you? I need to get to know you a little bit. And so then it kind of opens up that, like, where is the line for too personal, too much work? Like, you know what I mean? From a strategic point of view? Um, yeah. Of like, how do we separate the two? Mm. You just separate, you just have two separate accounts, I think is it. Yeah, but what if people, like, you know, not everyone want, not everyone is going to resonate with just what you're lifting. Like, no offense, Brick, this isn't me having a no, know, This is I just know. me, like, talking I know, I know, generally. I know, I know, I know no, that's saying. true. Right. Oh, so many businesses cool, have good. business accounts where they just put out information and lifts and, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, 
but what and especially for like the smaller smaller businesses people trying to make a brand for ourselves like say you and me right what like people want to get to know the person as well it's not just here's my squat here's my squat here's my squat here's my squat but what else do you do okay where do you where do you add add the personal touches to it and how much of that do you add before then it starts becoming a personal account or how much of that do you add before it's too much and then overshadows like you know the business side of things like it's really given that this is such a especially what we do it's such a personable um like a personable job that we don't like you know your clients know what you do sometimes they ask i'm sure they ask you you know what did you do on the weekend how was your weekend you know all that sort of stuff so then you know what do you follow that with i can't talk about that sorry because it's not what we're here for or do you go oh yeah you know i went out to dinner it was great went to this place and it kind of sparks a conversation while they're warming up so same sort of thing but online Online. good question um i think it's very individual but that doesn't answer help at all with the question no but it's very true but it depends what you want to happen. So you reverse engineer for what that what you want to happen, what you use the platform for. I don't think there's any one answer. I think you have to find the blend that works for you, but I think doing it is better than not doing it. Mm. So if, if being personal, vulnerable and open is definitely, I think more resourceful than not doing at, at, at all, especially from a, just a general business perspective of like just people getting to know you. Number two, just you got to use the tool intelligently. So I think, all right, so let's go like more ma- micro, like more specific. I think Instagram stories are a great tool for 24 hour clips that you can partition your or open honest thoughts on whatever quickly that you're thinking of, mm. right? Number two, you can go any direction with this. I think putting up your failures is important. I think that's a good way for people to get to know you in a bit more honest way. Um, so putting up failed lifts and using them as a tool for self-reflection to see how you're feeling. And personal just I think there's nothing wrong with doing all education but if you want people to build more trust with you then it does help to be vulnerable so I would start telling people things that you make you uncomfortable so that's it what are the things that make you uncomfortable you told you told us how you felt inadequate you find I would find a way to naturally distribute that information because you know how the motherfuckers are feeling about that too I, yeah and I've started being a bit more uh, transparent a little bit about like how I feel in certain things how like this is who I am um, no you no, keep I'm it in the middle it's, it's all good just keep, it, just keep it in the middle it'll be sweet it's how I feel as a person this is what I do I don't know that's just how I've been very closed off just because it's how I am I'm just a very <laughs> bright person but mm. I think that helps as well because yeah as Jess was saying like you can be business, 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 but if you're not like, okay, well, this is who I am other than this. It's like people only know for one thing, you're stuck in that niche, you're stuck in that niche for a long time. It's like, well, fuck, what else do you do? Like, do you, do you do anything fun on the weekend? Do you, you know, do you play music? Do you go to music gigs? Do you, know, do you have a garden at home? Do you like tend to that garden? Yes, do you have veggies I and do. stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, but that, yeah, it's. And so what you guys could do, it's a great, oh, I think that's why like podcasts are so great. It's like, it's an opportunity to have these conversations. Any of you two could grab a two minute clip and put it on your social media if you wanted. Like that, there it is. And yeah. you can, I'm sure you can do that 10 times over with the amount of shit we talked about. <laughs> so yeah. fuck, the opportunity's there. Yeah, social media is very interesting. Yeah. Because as I said, you go down this road of like wanting to know the person behind the social media or the person behind the business or you know whatever it is. Mm. But then how much of that is too much and then detrimental to your health? Because then again, are they only showing the highlight reel of their life? And so you go yeah. in their circle. And Jess, that's probably the thing that we don't know. Like, what is what is a good number? Oh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> like, It's, I it's to very tell easy to get caught in the trap of just scrolling for too long. Like, have you done it before? I've done uh, it before. Fucking where I, everybody. Where I scroll, <laughs> scroll through Instagram, face, I scroll through Instagram. Okay, cool. Scroll through Facebook better check instagram again <laughs> yeah might watch a youtube clip Worse, again, yeah. yeah maybe watch a youtube clip oh better see what's new on instagram again yeah. oh i haven't checked facebook yet better go back to facebook next thing you know you're on it for half an hour like dopamine. Oh, yeah bam, bam, exactly bam, bam, exactly oh, wham bam thank you ma'am <laughs> pretty much yeah left right good night yeah like and so you have these tools and you got to learn to use them for you or against you it's up to us so i've started this really 
I'm not going to call it interesting because I don't feel like it's interesting, but I've started this thing where I don't look at my phone when I'm with people. Mm. And it's funny, my ex is the one who started it because he hates his phone. Hates it. Like, throws it across the room, like, absolutely hates his phone. But he runs his own business, so he's got to have a phone. Um, And so when I was spending time with him when we were first started dating, I would put my phone away because I wanted to be present with him. Um, And I've just kind of, now obviously we're not together anymore, but I've kind of carried that on into every other relationship in my life um, where my phone sits over here. For sure. I'll have it out just in case, you know, something happens and mum needs to call me or whatever, but it sits over here. It'll ring when it rings, but I don't have to check social media because I'm with my friends. If I'm checking social media, I'm checking to see what they're doing, but I'm with them. So what do I need to, I don't need to know what anyone else is doing. That's great. That's a great start. I think people just get stuck in habits, like yeah. multi, multi-year habits, because now the iPhone's been around, where we have 10 plus years of iPhones, mm. smartphones. These, some of these habits are very old. Oh yeah. So breaking them is hard. Mm-hmm. But if you... Like how many times have you gone out and you've just looked around the room and you've seen people sit there like this on their phone? And not only is one person, but the other person sitting there like this on their phone too. Well, and no one's really talking. I think... It, I see a pro and con to that, but I also see like they're doing what they want to do. And Okay, you're doing what you want to do. What, what the fuck do I care then? Like... But at the same time, yeah, from from a from a observational perspective of sociability, communication, and you know, yeah, it can be harmful. But like, I think we they're doing what they want to do. We need to go back to we as a society, not we as in us. Well, we as in us as well. But the whole society needs to go back to those old school values. I feel like every development that we have as a society, whether it's technology or not, not all of it's good. Mm. And so I think we need to take a step back and go through go to those old school values of when you're with someone whether they're a friend whether they're a parent a significant other you're with them you're spending time with them your phone is out just in case you get a phone call but it sits over there put it on loud it doesn't need to be on silent put it on loud and you hear it ring but you don't need to constantly pick it up and check it that be present in the situation that you're in right it's like but people use the the phone to escape they'll and some people are so comfortable with each other at the same time, where they feel like they can just fully relax and like immerse themselves in a different world, even though they're sitting right in front of each other. I think it's very easy to judge and criticize uh, fairly and unfairly, but fuck, look, you just have to make an assessment whether this tool is working for you or against you. Is it destructive for you or is it working with you? And from there, you'll be able to distinguish whether it's a resourceful habit for you because It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't affect us about what other people are doing with their phones. It does, but it doesn't. It does if you're sitting with them. It, yes. Like, could you imagine if I'm sitting here in these podcasts and all I'm doing is this? Oh right. And occasionally I do You'd this. You'd call it out for sure, yeah, exactly. like I did with Christian. Like I told exactly. Jordan, put his phone away because you recognise that it's a mm, a distractor. They're not fully present with you. Yeah, you can tell. Mm. Conversations way different mm. when a motherfucker has their phone on them. Oh yeah. Way different. But shit. Do you think you'll have children? No. That's what I'm going to ask you. No. Yeah. <laughs> that was a real, that was a real, good, that was a real segue. <laughs> no, throw one, kids. That's right, man. Oh, I, I like make that. the segues. I like that. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing. Let, let them know. <laughs> I love that. I love that you're here to say that because that comment is probably what almost everybody must have been thinking from that question. Yeah, no, because I've been... What you guys don't know is I put that question at the back of my head because we were talking about children. Yeah, and the concussions and, coaching. and all that stuff. And yeah. we, had that chat a, we had that chat this morning. Yeah, we did. We talked <laughs> about this. Uh, yeah. this you did? Yeah. yeah. So you, you immediate no, you do immediate, not want to have... No. I don't you, want kids. Fuck, why? Um, no judgment, but I'm curious. Because I like the freedom I have in my life. Yeah. And because I watch all my friends that do have kids. And like, yes, they have very different parenting styles, but there's one underlying factor of their kids this is gonna come out really really bad but their kids come first which i'm not against that of course your kids have to come first but it's very easy for you know someone to call me and be like hey jess what are you doing in two hours actually you know what i have nothing planned with my friday night want to do something hey jess you want to do some talking chimps let's do it (laughs) you can do it exactly like we did before and i was like you know what i have no other plans i was just gonna go home sure why not let's do it yeah whereas you know when you've got a kid 
every single one of my 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 kids, every <laughs> single one of my friends that I have, have kids, <laughs> yeah, secretly you don't know this. Yes. Um, <laughs> they all, you know, you have to make plans, and you have to, you know, for would think in three. I've got a friend who I see her in every three months or so. Love her to death, known her for years, love her kids, but I see her roughly every three months or so, and we always plan like our little meet up whether it's a coffee or lunch or whatever two weeks ahead of time yeah because there's always something going on i like my i don't really want to call it a relaxed lifestyle but the i like having the ability to just go and do what i want to make decisions or with freedom yes at any time at any place I, you know if i really wanted to i could if i didn't have you know work and something else you know barbecue and stuff planned for tomorrow oh, i could very easily right now go you know what i'm gonna go away for the weekend all right i'll leave tonight i'll go home after this and i'll pack a, i'll pack a bag and off i go drive yep. down a lawn or you know wherever i choose to go yeah. i could very much do that if i didn't have some stuff already planned for tomorrow but i like being able to have that decision i don't have to factor in kids i don't have to factor in you know extra flights if we want to go on a holiday or anything like that fair enough did you I thought I saw you did you have something to say about that before I go I was going to say like well I think as a society you're taught uh, have the you know two kids you know what else it, what it, else did they tell us yeah, they like, white big offense well big offense so white big offense yeah a uh, real double story sort of house oh, as well yeah. um, honestly if a family takes a lot of time if you want to have a family great if you don't whatever like it's you can still you can still adopt as well. There's still tons of options to have kids. So oh, it's, yeah. like, it's not really like no issue with that. And it's it takes fucking hard work. It's not you know people have a kid and they and not that people think it's easy, but it's like oh okay, well it won't you know you're gonna have to give up a lot of responsibilities. Um, sorry, a lot of um things that you wouldn't normally do. Sorry, extracurriculars. Like, yeah, extracurriculars like going out with a friend. It's probably not gonna happen. You know, I'm gonna you know plan it even planning stuff for a significant other oh, I don't know probably eh, maybe not tonight but here's know. the thing none of us would be here without parents making six decisions parents, to have us yeah, yeah. <laughs> right six which parents, is yeah. interesting so it's it's a weird thing because ultimately I believe having children from my perspective is an ultimately selfish decision um, because you want to bring a child into the world more often than not to to either to pass on your lineage or a combination of facts, pass on your lineage um, to bring joy to the world and a different meaning to the world that you never had before, which children can bring. Um, in some combination of that, it usually comes down to selfish, uh, I believe, uh, interests. And so at the end of the day, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Well, I'd say- I'd It's say as simple as that. It'd be unselfish as well, like because you said selfish reasons, okay. You want to obviously pass on, um, blah, like genes and all that sort of stuff. But it's also an unselfish decision bringing into the world because you give up a lot of things for this kid. You give mm -hmm. up a lot of things to nurture this kid as well. So, um, which I'm just not willing to do. <laughs> but that's yeah, but gotta, that's uh, that's um, that's the thing. Like th <laughs> this child, I think the child doesn't owe you nothing. You decided to bring them into yeah. the world. Yeah. They are not a. They don't owe you nothing. They don't even owe you love. You owe them love. Yeah. I believe that. Oh, it's 100. percent Yeah, and that's the unselfish part of it as well. Like. You're giving yourself to the kids. You're giving yourself to an entirely, you, sorry, um, a human being entity. You're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to put all my love, all my affection, all my values, what yeah. is good, what is not good, yep. to this kid. Yep. And this kid's going to hopefully one day become a great human, um, a productive member of society. Yeah. You're passing all that on. So you're giving up maybe 10 years of this kid growing up. like 10. Well, more, oh, no, more. <laughs> hey, maybe 30. If you're in well, a, no, a, if you're Christian Wood for the 30. Uh, hey, if, you're, if you're in a European household, maybe 30. But it's, yeah, it's just giving yourself to a human being. I find that truly unselfish in the way it goes about it. Um, yeah, I see that. So I, I, I definitely respect, because I've talked to Jess about this a couple of times, I respect her um, views and I just go, well, fuck, I've had, I've had family members that have had multiple kids um, and we have like cousins, little cousins, and it's whatever, like, do what you want to fucking do in this world. We have one life. I was going to talk about one life. You've got one opportunity. Just do what you want to do. Like Okay, Eminem. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Vee. Hey, it's old spaghetti. <laughs> old, the old spaghetti. But yeah, no, nah, I just... Do you think you'll have children? Yeah, but we'll... Oh, I'm still going to get it. 
to get your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need another woman for that. Um, Accepting applications. Yeah, fuck, why not? Yeah, you know, if, if anyone's around. Well, hey, Titty Matt, what is it? Jeremy.Borzillo on Instagram? Yeah. At, um, yeah. Where, where can they email you applications? It is Jeremy <laughs> oh, at WoodfordSSC.com. Yeah, okay, so, Jer- yeah, Jeremy at WoodfordSSC.com. Uh, Facebook, Jeremy Borzillo. I'll just, and uh, <laughs> would you like full frontal nudes, uh, posterior <laughs> nudes? Or would you like videos uh, of them squatting or deadlifting? <laughs> oh. All of them acceptable. Yeah, all, all of the above. Um, whatever works so um, we'll see what happens there might be some weird ass people in there uh, I tell you my audience is not very female dominated <laughs> yeah I'm re- I'm really I am going to check in with you in a week's time I want to see how this hey, goes I'm really, I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel here any any of Alex's female uh, watchers of this podcast uh, <laughs> get around it I don't know what, what else can I say <laughs> support the Borzilla. <laughs> yeah I think that might be me then as well you guys keep on going no, yeah yeah Jess, you got Sorry, a good uh, chat, Brick. Thank you for uh, letting me crash your pod- potty. Uh, oh, sorry, podcast. Can't say that. You can't say potty. Uh, Trademarked. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> you got anything else you want to chat about? I don't know. What do you want to chat about? I think uh, I think it's a good place to end it. All right. Jessica Fantone, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. First female on the Talking Chimps. The first chimp. The first female chimp. First female chimp. I like making history. Yeah. No, that, was a, that was a good vibe there with bouncing off all of you. Very it good. was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Awesome. Let's do it again sometime. Where can people find you, Jess? Jess Fantone on Instagram. It's a great name. It's a very easy name to spell. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Facebook, Jessica Fantone. Do you really want to mix it up? See you, chimps. Catch you later.